All right, this is a heat transfer problem, and we are dealing with a 25 millimeter diameter high tension line, an electrical cable, uh, that has a resistance of 10 to the negative 4 ohm meters, and we know that we have a current that's going through it of a thousand amps. We also know that the surrounding air is at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius and the velocity of the air that's in cross flow is 10 meters per second. Now they want us to find the surface temperature of this uh, wire and the center line temperature of the wire. To start the problem, I'm going to draw a control surface right here on the wire. And what do we see happening through this control surface? Well, we have energy coming in through this current that we have, right? Energy coming in. There you go. Now, we also have energy leaving through this wind that's taking some of the energy away from it some heat transfer through convection so we're gonna have some energy leaving okay now to write this up let's do a energy balance all right here we have our components we have e in e out energy generated energy consumed and the change in energy stored now let's go through one by one E in. Do we have any kind of heat that's coming into this control surface? No, we are not heating it. There's no nothing like that coming in. Energy out. We actually have the convection is taking some energy out, so we're gonna leave that alone. So heat generated. Let's see. Well, electric current as it passes through it, it will generate some heat. So this is the one that we're going to be relying on, this I and R. Uh, energy consumed, we don't have any machines that like use electricity out of here or energy or take up other heat. So we don't have any kind of uh, heat consumption. And energy stored, we're not storing any energy in the system. So we're going to assume that to be completely zero. Now here are the only two components that we kept. Here it is, our energy out through loss through convection. And we have the energy generated due to the current flowing through it. Now, uh, let's take a look. We have given our resistance of 10 to negative 4 ohms, but it is ohms per meter. So it's a tricky thing that we need to realize that this is per length. So this is resistance per length. Now our energy here is I square times R, not per length. So we need to know that. In order to go here, we're going to have to divide this equation by a length, which will contain meter, right? So we're going to end up with the unit divided by meters. So there it is. I'm going to do that. Now on this side, I have heat rate per unit length. And here we have our energy generated. I squared with R again, based on a unit length. Now both sides are good. We will be able to find the formula for this one. And this, these two, we know them, so those are good. Here, these are all our options for Q, right? This is the heat rate or energy, just simple watts. Here we have the heat rate per unit length, watts per meter. Here we have the flux, which is which is watts per meter squared. And then we have volumetric uh, heat generation, which is watts per meter cubed. Now, here we have the per unit version but we don't have a formula for that but we do have a flux formula for convection so we're gonna have to turn this into a flux formula so we're gonna have to go from here to here and when we want to go to q equals the flux times area will give us q if we want 
per unit length, flux times length will give us the unit length. So that's what's happening here. I have the convection flux times pi d, which you can see right here is the circumference, right? 2 pi r equals pi d, so that's what it is. E and equals I, r, I squared r per unit length over there, there's no change. Now, the length, if we would have left it up here, we would need the both lengths in it, right? This whole surface. But this is the length that we divided out. So that's why we are not considering it here or here because we divided it out. Now here I just gonna plug in my flux formula H times TS minus T infinite. Everything else stays the same. Now here, let's see, what do we have and what do we don't have? The TS, that's what we, they are asking us to find, right? So I'm gonna mark that with a question mark in a circle. H, we don't know. T infinite, we know. Pi, we know. Diameter, we know. I, we know. Or uh, dash, we know. So these are our only two unknowns, TS and H. Now at this point, we know we're dealing with a heat transfer problem. So we have to lay out our game plan. We need to select a formula to find our H. So here we are dealing with a heat transfer problem and we in the heat transfer we have three main categories, right? Conduction, convection, radiation. This, the wind is blowing across a body, that is going to be convection. So I'm going to cross out radiation and conduction. We are not inside a pipe or duct, so it's not an internal flow, it's external flow. Now what kind of geometry are we dealing with? This is not a flat plate, this is a blunt body, so I'm going to cross out flat plate. And we have formulas for cylinder in cross flow and spheres. We are dealing with a cylinder in cross flow, so I'm going to cross out the sphere. And now we know that we have three different options from which we can select formulas from. These are the three uh, formulas that we can rely on, Hilpert, Zakauskas, and uh, Churchill and Bernstein. It doesn't really matter which we pick, but you need to make a game plan because uh, all of these three, they're going to require you to select uh, properties at different temperatures. Some of these will require temperatures at surface temperature or the air temperature, others at film temperature. So you make, need to make up your mind which one you're going to pick. I'm going to pick this one, Churchill and Bernstein. And I know that this will require me to find formulas at film temperature. Here's the close-up of the formula that's coming up. And I know that I need to be on my properties at film temperature. So that's what I'm going to follow. Now it, we're going to have a, comes a little part that's going to be a bit tricky. Let's see how we're going to manage it. So in order for me to find my film temperature, I need the surface temperature and the ambient air temperature. The ambient air temperature we have, but the surface temperature we don't. That's actually one of the things we need to find. So how am I going to find my film temperature? Well, here's a kind of a line for my thought process. So the way I assume something, let's see. Well, the ambient air is 10 and this thing is the air, I mean the electricity flowing through it, it's kind of heating it a bit, right? So I don't know how much, but it's heating it. So I'm going to assume that it's going to be more than that, the ambient air temperature. So more than 10 degrees Celsius. Now, how much more? Are we going to go all the way to the melting point of the wire? I don't think that makes any sense. Now, are we going to go to like burning to the touch? Well, if this, if this is like a wire on top of power lines, birds don't get cooked when they land on it. So I don't think going this far would be okay as well either. So I'm going to 
go somewhere guessing around room temperature, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, but we'll see that in the end, if we are just somewhere around the ballpark of the correct number, that's good enough. So this is where I'm going to pick my number around room temperature. Now my next focus is uh, look in your property tables. My property tables go by 50 Kelvin. So instead of trying to guess TS what it would be, try to find TF right away and guess that in a way that it will help you in the property table. So you don't have to interpolate for every single value you need. So therefore I'm going to just go and work with 300 Kelvin. I have all the values necessary for that, so I'm going to rely on that one. So in order to use my foreign wheel from uh, Churchill and Bernstein, uh, we can tell that we're going to need the Reynolds number, we're going to need a K, and we're also going to need the Proncton number. So let's find those. Okay, here's my Reynolds number formula, and I found all the properties that I'm going to need. Here's the kinematic viscosity, I'm going to need it right here. And as a matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and plug everything in since we know it. And here's our Reynolds number. The K and Proncton number, they're also here, because we're going to need it in the next step. Here it is, the Churchill and Bernstein formula. I went ahead and I plugged everything in. We know our diameter, K, Proncton number, Reynolds number, and there you go, plugged in. And go ahead, calculate this monster, and we're going to find that our H is 72.6 watts per meter square Kelvin. Now, this is not what we wanted, they want us to find TS, right? So I'm going to go ahead and solve for TS from this formula down here. And now that we have all our components, we can go ahead, plug in everything in its place, and we can find that our surface temperature is 27.54 degrees Celsius. Okay, this is our number, but let's have a little conversation about this number. Okay, so this is the number that we found, and if you backtrack it, when we assume 300 Kelvin, we that means we assumed 444 degrees Celsius, right? Now this means a 16.46 degree difference, so we don't exactly nailed it, we are a bit off. But let's take a look and see if does this really matter. Now, if I would have guessed or assumed exactly this temperature that we just found, finding my new film temperature would give me 291.8 Kelvin, right? Now, when I go to my tables with the properties, I would have to find my properties interpolating every single one of them and find them that way. Then I'm going to have to go ahead and find my Reynolds number for the same process that we did, the H with Churchill and Bernstein, and then we would find that there it is. This would be our more accurate and more correct surface temperature. And look at that. 27.54, 27.52. Didn't really change all that much. Another thing, let's say that you assume completely different than what I assumed or someone else assumed, right? We assumed right here in the middle, 300 Kelvin. Let's say you assume, oh... 250, a little bit off, 350, a little bit off in the other direction. Look at that. Find your properties, find your Reynolds number, find your H, the other properties, and you will see that your temperatures, look at that, 27.0, 28.0. So even when you're off 50 degrees here, your result will be off only by 0.5 degrees Celsius. This assumption game plan works only because when we are dealing with properties as temperature rises in the material or drops the properties the values they are changing fairly slowly so 
when we guess something, it is okay for us to just miss it by somewhat. Obviously, if we miss it by a thousand degrees, it's not gonna make sense. But if we miss it by somewhat, the values, they will still guide us in a fairly okay direction. Now, our second question, temperature in the center line of this wire or cylinder that we are working with. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit. Remember this one, we were working with convection. Here, we're gonna switch and focus on conduction. We are going through the material of the wire. So from the surface to the center line, that's all wire, solid material. So we're gonna be taking a look at how the heat transfers from these between these two points. And they want us to consider it as a solid copper. And here it is, there's a little sketch of the center line. My RO, that's the radius from the center line to the surface. And this is a formula that we have uh, our textbook uh, deduct. And it helps us find the temperature in the wire or in the cylinder at any point we want it, just by plugging in the correct values. And since we want it right at the center, our R will be zero. So this formula comes, breaks down to just this little piece. Now here we can tell that we have a Q dot. That is volumetric generation, heat generation, which is uh, watts per meter cubed. So in case you forget, it's always good to look at the units, right? Watts per meter cubed, what is that? It's energy, watts, divided by meter cubed, that's a volume. So you can kind of figure it out if you forget what are you dealing with just by looking at the units. So what kind of energy are we dealing with? It's right here, this one, the electrical energy, right? The I squared times R. And the volume is the volume of the cylinder dry right here. Now, if we remember, we don't have R. We only have R prime, which is resistance per length. So we're going to have to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the length. And this will help us get R prime. And down here, this L will simply cancel out. Now we can see that we finally have everything we need. So we can go ahead and find our volumetric heat generation. Down here, I plugged everything in and there's our value. 2.04 times 10 to the fifth watts per meter cubed. Now let's go back here and finally find our center line temperature. We have everything we need. I plugged it in. And after calculating, we can see that the center line temperature is 27.56. Only 0 0.02 degrees different than what we had right here. One little thing to keep in mind that this K right here the conduction coefficient is gonna be specific property of the copper. They told us to assume the wire is copper, so you're gonna have to find that in your property table and plug that in. Don't confuse this K with the K that we used for the air.